Hi there, I'm Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network and thanks for tuning in to our YouTube channel, Debt Bites. Today I want to talk about what to say to a debt collector. Um, listen, you're on the phone with a debt collector for a reason. Either they called and you accidentally picked up and weren't sure who it was or you're just distracted and you're politely hanging up like I often encourage. But when you're having dialogue with a debt collector, you're actually having a conversation. I usually want you to have a purpose in mind for most of the people I work with, for most of the people that are probably out doing their research and land on this channel and are watching this video, it's because you probably want to negotiate something. You want to get it settled. And I highly encourage settlements as opposed to payment plans because usually if you're dealing with a debt collector, it's because you've been behind on your payments long enough on a bill that the damage is already done to your credit. You can't undo the damage. So settling with them is going to have the same impact updating your credit report to zero balance owed and a resolved collection as if you paid them all or even three times the money you owe. You're not going to get a better kind of um, setup or a better kind of impact to your credit either way, so why not save money? So talking to a debt collector and what to say to them is a really basic concept, okay? Break it, I'm going to break it down as simply as I can with just two types of things that you, information that you give. One is something happened in your life that led to your inability to pay. Whatever that hardship scenario was is either resolved and it no longer exists or it's still ongoing or a portion of it's still ongoing. Those are the things, the things that made it hard to be you financially at the time that you stopped paying or the things that made it hard to be you right now as far as your finances go. Um, those are the things that I want you to focus on. All right, so let's assume that it's job loss, medical, or some very common issue, a separation, dual income household suddenly now reduced to one and you couldn't afford your bills. So you stop paying. And if those conditions persist, those are the things to highlight. Those are your talking points. Hey, I couldn't pay then, I still can't pay now, but I've got a family member that I kind of finally confided in and they're willing to help me uh, kind of dig out from the mess, uh, the wreckage of that. Or uh, my health hasn't really recovered fully. Uh, I'm not really working full time. I'm not at full capacity. I don't have my full income. But again, I've got some resources, some people that are helping me out. So I want to talk to you about what that could look like. Uh, and then I can you know, confirm that they can loan me the money. In that scenario, you're conveying hardship. You're conveying the fact that it still exists and persists and that you have limited resources and that you're going to have to go outside of your own personal resources to come up with money. That's important because debt collectors are always looking for payments. They're always looking for all the money first. That's what they love. But that they know is not realistic. They lead with it because it makes you feel the pressure. And then they're looking for what can you afford to pay on this account monthly. And they want to try and get it in a few, as few payments as possible. The larger the debt, obviously, the less likely you're going to have all the money to come up with in a short period of payments. So the more likely they're looking at extended periods of payments. That's what they want. And they're looking for information from you to suggest that that's what they can get. So by focusing on the hardship and focusing on having to look outside of your own personal resources, you can kind of distill this down to the negotiated and the lack of funds and you know whatever you're going to offer is going to be what you can do. I like to have the debt collector be the first one to say, well, this is what we'll accept. Because then I'll just tell them it's impossible, right? Unless it's not. And there are instances where debt collectors just completely just go right down to the bottom basement after they hear your hardship. They can see your credit report, real-time access. And if you've got nine other accounts on there that you're not paying and you they're talking to somebody who only has one of them, they only care about the one and they can see the other eight and they don't want you to go off and offer money to somebody else and then you wouldn't have any for them. So sometimes you'll find a scenario where the, the debt collector is just like, this is the lowest we can go. And you know what? Sometimes they're just going to be truthful about it. Other times they're going to say it's 50%. It's as low as we go. It's low as we ever go. But of course they may go lower. You don't have to reach deal when you're talking with a debt collector in the first phone call. In fact, it's not really all that normal unless you're paying top dollar and you're falling for whatever, or you already know and have done your research and you know that Citibank, when you're talking directly to their recovery department, isn't gonna go less than 35%. Chase isn't gonna go less than 40% when you're dealing with their recovery department. If you know those things, then, and they go there right away, not much sense in mincing words. But, Talking with a debt collector and going on that second train of thought, the things to avoid. 
When you're talking with a debt collector, you do not want to give them positive information. So notice how I have been focused on giving them negative information, things that make it tough to be you and how they're not going to get you to pay because you can't afford to pay. If you can, it's going to be because you go to family. Well, if you start using positive type of um, tones and words and phrases that they're going to key off of, like I was out of work, but I'm back to work. They can see that now you have a regular income. They can also see it from your credit report. So remember how I use the one side of the coin is, is that the negative side is you have nine accounts that blew up in your face and you're not paying on. That's on your credit report. They know that. But if you have nine positive things that have been kept current, just not this one, they know that. Okay. So when you say things to them that are not supported by what's on your credit report, they are, they see you as less sincere. They usually will target higher percentages from you and settling. So stay away from anything that is positive, but understand that if you do have some positive things showing on your credit report, you need to be prepared for the fact that they know that. You might bring it up. You might have some talking points for that. Here's a couple of examples. Of course I'm paying my mortgage. If I don't, they kick out. They, they foreclose. They kick me out. Of course I'm paying my car payment because if I don't, I don't have a way to work. They'll repossess it. Of course I'm paying that small balance credit card because the minimum payment is $20. I can afford that. I cannot afford my minimum payment on this one, which is $280. Big difference, right? So talking points around other credit cards that are equally high balance that you owe, whose minimum payment is about what you would owe to this debt collector that you're talking to or bank is a little bit more difficult, a little bit more nuanced. Um, sometimes I actually encourage folks to work with a professional when you're not prepared to have these conversations with debt collectors. And a lot of us aren't. And it's okay to work with a pro. Just look for somebody that's affordable. We have some in our network. Just pick up the phone. I can consult with you. I do that for free. Option two, um, after you dial the number, hear my voice, press two, that'll ring my phone. And I can get you connected to resources that are the lowest cost in the industry. That's all we have in our network. So when your dialogue leads towards numbers and figures. Okay, so you're on the phone with a debt collector. You tell them what you've got going on, how bad things were where you're at now, what you might have the capacity to borrow, and let's assume, for nice round numbers here, let's assume that you owe on a $6,000 account, okay? And the debt collector is the first one to get it after your debt charged off, credit card debt. Your expectation in some situations might be that you can settle for 2,000 of the six, or 3,000 of the six. Just depends, each creditor is different. Share with me the information about who you're dealing with in the comments below, and I can give you some expert feedback right here on our channel. But when that dialogue starts and you're saying, oh, okay, that sounds like a good offer. I don't have the money. I don't, I don't have the $3,000. Um, let me get back to you, though. I'll see what I can do. And let a few days go by. Let a week go by. And you call them back and you say, look, I didn't have any money at the time we spoke last. And I thought that was a great offer, half off, $3,000. I don't have that either. But I did talk to my brother, and I'm just throwing this out as a hypothetical and he wants to help me, but he's not loaded. Um, he doesn't have a lot of money. Uh, he did say that he could borrow, he could lend me 1500 and I just thought maybe that's something you guys would entertain taking, And if, but he's only gonna give it to me if it resolves the debt. Okay, so now you're going back and forth. It's game on when there's an offer on the table for less than what you owe. Doesn't matter if you offered something and they countered with something lower than the full balance owed, but not quite as low as you need them to go. Anytime you have that engagement, you're negotiating. And so you let a few days go by, you go back, you make a counter offer and they may make another one. And or if it's certain creditors or at certain times of delinquency, there's no, no way you're gonna get lower than the 3000 that was offered originally by some creditors in certain situations. Sometimes you just need time. You need more time. You might not even be able to deal with that debt collector. It might be the next debt collector that gets it that you're able to resolve it with for an affordable amount. Or you may have to just save up that 50% to get where you're going. Different debts get settled at different amounts at different times. You should always be polite when you're talking to a debt collector. If you can afford something, have that dialogue. Always get something in writing. Okay, So if you reach a mutual agreement verbally, you don't want to separate yourself with a penny until you have it in writing. If in some cases this happens, it's terrible. And I hope that uh, new rules coming out next year from the CFPB about debt collectors, uh, I hope that changes nationally and that every collector has to comply with this, but some won't issue or give you a letter about the agreement to settle for what you've just reached on the phone. 
until you have a payment set up in their system. Then if that's the case, make it for weeks out and that gives you time to get the letter in the mail. I usually encourage you if somebody's refusing to release a letter until they get payment or get payment set up in their system to record the phone call. Let them know that you're recording and why. I'm recording this because I need to cover my butt in case you guys renege on this deal or I don't get the letter and I have something to protect myself um, before I give you payment information. So they're always recording anyway, right? So, and they tell you. So just tell them you're recording and why and do it. You can use a lot of different free apps on um, Android or iPhones, uh, smartphones to record these things or you can go old school with a tape recorder on speakerphone if you need to. So when you're talking with a debt collector and you're reaching agreements to resolve a debt, it's not all that complicated. Realize that some debt collectors are better at their job than others by being polite. Some are better at their job than others by being rude and abrupt. Um, some debt collectors are abusive and you have rights so that if you experience something abusive, I want to know about it. I want to know about it. And you know what? Your attorney general wants to know about it. The CFPB, uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, wants to know about it. You can file complaints with them. Post something in the comments though and I can kind of help give you direction on well, does that reach to a level of, man, I could probably sue them even, you know, because there's a lot of attorneys out there that take those kind of cases free or not free. They take them on a contingency. If they succeed in getting it resolved in your favor, you have no out of cost outlay, nothing up front at all. And you won't really pay them anything. Really, it's the successful outcome, the settlement with the debt collector that pays them. And sometimes you get cash too. Not a lot, but enough. And it's usually that bad behavior and being sued for that bad behavior that creates a deterrent from the next debt collector or that same collector doing the same thing to somebody else. So it is important, not just for you, to stand up for yourself. It's important for all of us out here. So it's a pretty long video already and I want to kind of wind it down. Just understand that my experience has largely been helping consumers settle their own debt coaching people to resolve their own debt without me picking up the phone and do it. Now I do it, been doing it for years, still do some actually, and we have resources available to you. But at the end of the day, I'm here to tell you that thousands of people I've helped call the debt collector, get the courage, get the understanding, get the wherewithal and the ability to negotiate on their own effectively and get the results that uh, pros get. Okay, so I've been doing this for a long, long time and the vast majority of people have no problem talking with the debt collector once you're armed with the information you need. So, and these are, I mean, I'm every walk of life and or um, language uh, barrier, um, an ability to communicate well, uh, ability to pay, all of the things and all the challenges that you have, I'm here to tell you, you should be encouraged to reach out to a debt collector to reach the result that you want, but have realistic expectations. Resolving debt with debt collectors for pennies on the dollar, and I define that as less than a dime, uh, just doesn't happen. It's not common at all. Um, if you know who you're dealing with, the name of the debt collector, and how late you are, put that in the comments. I can help you with some realistic expectations on what the trend is with that collector and give you some talking points too. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.